Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem 1, 3, 2 pattern. We're given an array of n integers and we want to find a 1, 3, 2 pattern such that there are three integers and they appear in the order i, j, k. So j appears after i in the array and k appears after j in the array. But the order of the values actually is going to be a bit different. Even though k appears third in the order, the value of k is actually going to be strictly in between i and in between j. So that's why it's called the 1, 3, 2 pattern. Because the second value that appears uh, is actually going to be larger than both the left value and the right value. So taking a look at an example, how could we possibly solve this problem? Well, we know that we have to have at least three integers first of all. We can look at the first value, we can look at the second value, and since we've looked at at least two values now, we can start looking for our target value, which is going to be the k, because we know k is gonna be the third value that appears after i and j, and what we want from k is to find a value that is less than a previous value, that's our j value, we want k to be less than the j value, but we also want k to be greater than the i value, and we also want the j value to be greater than the i value. Now that's pretty complicated. Even doing this in a brute force way would not be simple. We would say that, okay, this is possibly our k, so now we want to start looking backwards to find a value that is greater than this value 4. We would look at 1, that's not greater. We would look at 3, that's not greater. So we didn't find any value. We did not find our J candidate. So now we continue. We will now go to the fourth value. We're going to consider that this is our K value. Let's start looking backwards for our J candidate. Let's look at the previous value first. This is a 4. That is greater than 2. So we found our J candidate. Now we want to find a value that is, now we need to find a value that is less than 4, but is also less than k. And if the value is less than k, then we know for sure it's going to be less than j. So now we need to find a value that's less than 2. We look at the previous value, it's 1, and that is less than 2. So that pretty much means that we found our i, we found all three values that we needed. So in the worst case, this kind of pseudo brute force solution that I showed, every time we get to a value, we'd potentially have to look through every previous value that came before. But there's a way to optimize this problem using a stack data structure. Let me explain it to you because it's definitely counterintuitive, at least for me. Remember how when we get to a k value, we want to then look backwards in reverse order to see if there's any values greater than this value. For us to do that efficiently, it would be nice if our stack was always in decreasing order, also called monotonically decreasing order, or mono decreasing order for short. And this is actually a somewhat common stack technique. So it's not like I'm just making this up. But if you've never done it before, I would not expect you to be able to come up with this by yourself. Even if you know what this is, it's not super easy to apply it to this problem. I think this problem is deceptively difficult. The best way to show you how this is going to work is with an example. So we're going to iterate through the array. First, we're going to look at three. We would want to check normally, are there any values greater than three before it? But we know there's nothing before it because our stack is empty. So we're going to go ahead and add three to the stack. We're going to look at the next value one. And in this case, we're also going to ask, are there greater values before it? There's a three, which is good, but there's only one value. We need there to be at least two values that came before it because this is our K candidate. So in this case, it's not going to work either, but let's just continue to go through this example. We're going to get one and then we're going to get to four. But did you notice that for this one, it was easy for us to know that there were greater values that came before it because our stack is in decreasing order. When we get to the one, every value on the stack before it was greater than it. But now when we get to the four, all the values before it on the stack are smaller than four. So they're practically useless for the purpose of four. So what we're going to do is 
pop them. So we look at one at the top of our stack is less than four, we pop it. Three, the top of our stack is less than four, we pop it. But now we are going to go ahead and add four to the stack. By the way, for four, we found that even though now there are at least two elements that came before it, none of them were greater than four. So four is definitely not our K value. Now we get to the last value two. We want to check the top of our stack. Is the top of our stack greater than two? Yes, it is. It's four. But there's only one value now on our stack. What good was it for us to have removed the other values? Because now how do we know if we have a solution or not? Well, there's one thing that I haven't mentioned yet, and it's that on our stack with every single value, we're also going to be maintaining what was the minimum value that came before that n value because notice how we're trying to uh, get this inequality right as we go through uh, position by position we are searching for a k value right the top of our stack is potentially a j value that's why we want to maximize the top of our stack it could be the J value, but what about the I value? Well, we want to minimize the I value. The easiest way to do that is every time we add a max value to our stack, we also take what was the minimum value in the entire array that came before that value. This is really easy to get for us because we can actually maintain the minimum in a single variable. And you know, as we added three, three didn't really have a minimum value. Or we could say that you know, the minimum value before that was three itself. For one, the minimum value before one was also three. For four, the minimum value before four was one. So even though, yes, we did remove some values from our stack, we didn't lose any important information because what, what we really want to keep on the stack are the maximum values. It's okay if we removed some smaller values because we are still keeping track of the minimum. And it's okay that we removed smaller values also because every time we get to a new value in our array, to give us the most number of options for the K value, we always want the top of our stack to be the maximum. That'll give us the most flexibility when it comes to finding a K value. And so by the time we reach the end of the array, if we find a solution, we can return true. If we don't, we can return false. In the worst case, we'll end up adding every single value to the stack at most once and then popping it from the stack at most once. So that'll be, you know, two times N operations. That's going to reduce to big O of N. That's the overall time complexity. That's also going to be the overall memory complexity because of our stack. So now let's code it up. Okay, so now let's code it up. Like I said, we're gonna have a stack data structure. This is actually gonna contain a pair of values. If you don't wanna have a pair of values on this, you can just have two different stacks, which will probably be the exact same size. Uh, one will contain the number and one will contain uh, whatever the minimum value to the left of that value is. And by the way, this is gonna be monotonically uh, decreasing. Uh, it's a little bit counterintuitive, but if we have the stack in decreasing order, that will make it easier for us to find the maximum. The maximum isn't necessarily always going to be on the top of the stack, actually. We might have to pop some values to get to the maximum. So let's uh, continue coding it up. Uh, by the way, we're also going to be maintaining the current minimum value. Initially, we're just going to say that's going to be the first value in the array, but you could also set it to like float of negative infinity or something like that. We're going to iterate through every value in the array, but we can actually skip the first value. And we're skipping the first value because that can't possibly be the K value anyway. It can't be the J value either. It can only be the I value, which uh, is going to be on the minimum of our stack anyway, because it's already we're already putting that first value in current minimum. So if it's going to be relevant, it'll be relevant through that. But the first thing we want to do when we look at N is check if there are any smaller values than it on our stack, then we are going to pop them. So while our stack is non-empty and n is greater than or equal to any values on the top of our stack, we're going to pop them. You're going to see why I'm doing greater than or equal in just a second, because after we've done this, after we've popped every value that's greater than or equal to it, then there are two possibilities. Either our stack is empty or our stack is non-empty. And in that case, 
then we can check if n is actually smaller than the top of our stack. With this, we're basically checking that there is a value that came before n that's greater than it. And we also then want to check and is n greater than the minimum value that came before this value? What is the minimum value that came before this value? Well, conveniently, we stored it here in the second index. So I'm just going to copy paste this. And instead of putting zero here, I'm going to put one here. So if this is the case, that means we did find our 132 pair or 132 pattern, and then we can go ahead and return true. Now, one thing you might notice though is since we did this while loop, while n is greater than or equal to that, continue popping, then in our if conditional, why do we even have to check if n is smaller than the top of our stack? We know by definition either the stack is empty now. And if it's not empty, then for sure this is going to be smaller than the top of our stack or else our while loop up here would not have even executed. So actually you can get rid of this if you want to. But if we did not just find our solution, well, then we're going to go ahead and append to the stack this, uh, first of all, a pair, n is going to be the first value, and then the current minimum, the minimum value before n is also going to go. We know that we're maintaining our decreasing order in the stack because we popped all elements that were greater than it or equal to it. Uh, and we also don't want to forget to actually update the current minimum after. So we're going to take the minimum of itself and the current value n that we're looking at right now. So after that, if we never find the solution, we're going to want to return false outside of our loop. Now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. Sometimes it's inconsistent on leak code, but who cares? I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.